I want to talk about stability, particularly stability of ships, which is a very important thing. They float. Suppose I have an object here which is floating in water. Here's the water line. And let here be the center of mass of that object. Could be way off center, could be an iceberg, could be boulders, could be rocks in there. Right? It doesn't have to be uniform density. Center of mass could be off the center of the geometric center. So if this object has a certain mass, then this is the gravitational force. But now look at the center of mass fluid that is displaced. That's clearly more here, somewhere here, the displaced fluid. That is where the buoyant force acts. And so now what you have, you have a torque on this object relative to any point that you choose. Doesn't matter where you pick a point, you have a torque. And so what's going to happen, this object is clearly going to rotate in this direction. And the torque will only be zero when the buoyant force and the gravitational force are on one line. Then the torque becomes zero and then it is completely happy. Now there are two ways that you can get them on one line. We discussed that earlier in the different context. You can either have the center of mass of the object below the center of mass of the displaced fluid or above. In both cases would they be on one line. However, in one case there would be a stable equilibrium, in the other there would not be a stable equilibrium. I have here an object which has its center of mass very low. You can't tell that. No way of knowing. All you know is that the weight of the displaced fluid that you see here is the same as the weight of the object. That's all you know. If I took this object and I tilt it a little with the center of mass very low, so here is mg and here is somewhere the water line, so the center of mass of the displaced fluid is somewhere here, so fb is here, the buoyant force, you can see what's going to happen. It's going to rotate towards the right. It's a restoring torque. And so it's completely stable. I can wobble it back and forth and it is stable. If I would turn it over, then it's not stable because now I would have the center of mass somewhere here high up. So now I have mg and the center of the buoyant force the displaced water is about here. So now I have the buoyant force up and now you see what's going to happen. I tilt it to the side and it will rotate even further. This torque will drive it away from the vertical. And that's very important therefore with ships, that you always build the ship such that the center of mass of the ship is as low as you can get it. That gives you the most stable configuration. If you bring the center of mass of ships very high, in the seventeenth century they had these very massive cannons which were very high on the deck, then the ship can capsize. And it has happened many times because the center of mass was just too high. So here, the center of mass is somewhere here. It's very heavy, this part. And so now, if I lower it in the water, notice it goes into the water to the same depth because the buoyant force is of course the same, so the amount of displaced water is the same in both cases. But now the center of mass is high and this is very unstable. When I let it go, it flips over. But the center of mass of the object was higher than the center of mass of the displaced fluid. And so with ships you have to be very careful about that.